Hello, this is Professor Sanyal. In this tutorial, I am going to provide a brief introduction to the RapidMiner Studio interface. I am going to show how to import datasets into RapidMiner and also how to create, run and save uh, process. The version of RapidMiner that I am using in this tutorial is RapidMiner Studio 6.0 starter version that is the one that is downloadable for free from RapidMiner website and I am using RapidMiner on a PC running Windows 7. The screen that I am currently on this is the welcome screen that you see when you start RapidMiner Studio at this point, I want you to focus your attention on the top right corner where you see four icons, Home, Design, Results and Wizard. These are called perspectives in RapidMiner. We are currently on the Home perspective and we can go to Design perspective by sim simply clicking on this icon and similarly we can go to Results and Wizard perspectives by clicking on these icons. We can also switch perspectives from using the menu, view, perspectives and then say design. Now the two perspectives that we'll be mostly using in RapidMiner are the design perspective which is the central working environment of RapidMiner and also the results perspective where the results of our data analysis will be produced. So let's start with the design perspective. This perspective is divided into several parts which are called views. So we have the operators view and the repositories view on the left. We have the process view where all analysis processes are created, edited and managed. And on to the right we have the parameters view and the help view. Now we can switch the positions of these views by simply dragging them and dropping them. So we can move the param operators to the right, we can move the parameters to the left. However, if we don't like these new positions of these views, we can always go back to the original positioning by going to view and restore default perspective which will bring back the views to the original positions. Now the operators view is one of the most important views where all the methods and algorithms that we'll be using in RapidMiner are present. So for instance under modeling we can see regressions, the different types of regression uh, uh, operators that are available. Then we have clustering and correlation, association rules, all these are known as operators. These methods are known as operators in RapidMiner. And then below we have the repositories uh, view where we'll store data sets, we'll import data sets and store and also the processes that we build in RapidMiner will save using these repositories. So now we are going to import a data set into RapidMiner and then build a simple process. In order to import a data set into RapidMiner, we can import it in the local repository that was created when we installed RapidMiner. However, I want to show you how to create a new local repository and then I'll use that new repository to import the data set. So in order to create a new repository, we can hit this icon over here which will bring up this dialog box and we'll say next and we'll call it my tutorial and this repository we can point to any folder on our hard drive. I will point it to a folder that I have already created on my hard drive and that's in I drive and that's called my tutorial. So this folder I have already created on my hard drive and I'll point this new repository to this folder that is I um, my tutorial 
and I'll say finish. So now I have a new repository uh, called my tutorial and I prefer storing data and processes in two separate subfolders in my repository just so that I know where the data are and where the, my processes are. So in order to create subfolders within this repository I can right click here and then say create folder and I'll create two subfolders one called data and another called processes. I'll say OK. So now I'm ready to import a data set into RapidMiner. To do that I'll have to go to this icon and I'll press the down arrow and these are the different types of files that I can import in RapidMiner. CSV files, uh, Excel files, XML, uh, access database files and so on. For this tutorial I'm going to import a spreadsheet that I have already stored in the my tutorial folder which is called Toyota Corolla dot XLS. So I'm going to import this uh, spreadsheet into RapidMiner. So I'll hit next. Now in this screen you so you see these two tabs data and variables because the Toyota Corolla spreadsheet that I'm trying to import has two worksheets in it one called data which contains the actual data and the other called variables which contains the description of the attributes present in the data worksheet. Now let me briefly tell you what this uh, spreadsheet, the data this spreadsheet contains. It contains data on about uh, 1000 Toyota Corollas which were sold in uh, Netherlands. So these are used Toyota Corollas that were sold in Netherlands. The prices that you see are in euros and it contains several other attributes of these cars such as the age of the car, the manufacturing month, year, the mileage on these cars, the fuel type and so on. Now at this point I'll go ahead and hit next. We don't need to do anything on this screen. Now the, in this screen you see that uh, RapidMiner has tried to guess the type of each attribute that are contained in the data set. For instance, it has correctly guessed that the that the type of the price attribute is integer because all the prices in this data set are integers. Similarly it has guessed that the mileage attribute is also integer. However it has incorrectly guessed some attributes. For instance one of the attributes that it has incorrectly guessed is this automatic attribute. The automatic attribute is a binary attribute which is set to 0 if the car is not automatic and it is set to 1 if the car is automatic and therefore we can change this type of this attribute from integer to binomial. So in RapidMiner binary attributes are referred to as binomial and we can do any other we can make similar changes to any other attribute types that we think are uh, not appropriate. We can also remove attributes that we don't want to import. So for example if we don't want to import the ID uh, attribute we can remove it. For the In this case I'll keep all attributes as it is and I'll go ahead and say next and it asks me where I want to import this data set and I'm going to import it in this my tutorial repository that I created in the data subfolder and it asks for a name. I'll keep the name same as it is. So I'll call it Toyota Corolla and I'll say finish. So now the Toyota Corolla dot XLS has been imported to RapidMiner and RapidMiner has automatically switched to the results perspective as you can see. So we are currently in results perspective and here is the data set and in this results perspective we can also 
see some basic statistics of this data set. So for example, if we click on this icon, it shows some basic statistics of each attribute. For instance, the price attribute is an integer which we already saw and the range of prices present in this data set is from 4350 euros to 32,500 euros. The average price of cars in this data set is 11,860.796 euros and the deviation and so on and so forth. And in addition to these basic statistics we can also look at some charts. So for example we can look at scatter plot of let's say the price of the car versus the age of the car and as you would imagine as the age of the car um, increases the price of the car decreases. Okay so let's go back to our design perspective and we can do that again by just clicking on this icon. So now we are in design perspective. We have this data set Toyota Corolla and now we are all set to build a simple process. Now the simple process that I'll build in this tutorial is I'll just try to create a correlation matrix for all the attributes present in the data set. So to do that I have to first put the data set in this process area I can do that by dragging this data set Toyota Corolla. So I'll drag this data set onto this process area. So now I have this Toyota Corolla data set in this process area and I can drag and put it wherever I want. And now I have to put an operator, I have to add an operator to this process that can create the correlation matrix and there is a correlation matrix operator available in RapidMiner. I can try searching that operator or an easier way is to just type in the first few letters. So for example correlation, if I type correlation then RapidMiner shows the correlation matrix operator. This is the operator that I need and I can drag and drop it over here or I can also double click on this operator and it will be put in the process area. So let's go ahead and double click this operator. So it is put over here. I can move this operator in wherever uh, place I like and by simply dragging it and uh, the reason you see this link was already built is because I have this auto wire input ports enabled. If I don't have this auto wire enabled then this link will not be built. So what I'll do now is I'll remove this auto wire input ports just to show you how to add links I'll remove this one so now auto wire input ports is not enabled and now I'm going to delete this operator that I just added by right clicking and saying delete and now I'm going to again try to add this correlation matrix in our process area by double clicking this so so now you see that link was not automatically added by RapidMiner because I didn't ask it to automatically wire the input ports. Now the uh, each operator in RapidMiner has uh, input ports and output ports. Not every operator has input ports and output ports. For example, this retrieve Toyota Corolla data set whose purpose was to retrieve the data set onto the process area didn't have any input port. It only has output ports. The correlation matrix operator however has both input ports as well as output ports. Now the input port is mandatory for the correlation matrix which is why if I put my cursor over there it says that there is an error mandatory input missing at port correlation matrix. So it requires a input some input and I'm going to feed that input by joining the output of the data set to the input port of the correlation matrix operator. I can do that by dragging by putting my cursor over here and pressing the cursor and dragging this and then releasing the cursor over here. 
so now I have developed a process flow these are called these are also referred to as splines and this is a process flow in rapid miner what it means is I am putting the output of this retrieve Toyota Corolla operator which is the data set itself as you can see over here this is the metadata of the data set and I'm feeding this data set into the input port of the correlation matrix and the uh, output of the correlation matrix will obviously be uh, a correlation matrix and you see there are three possible output uh, three outputs possible from this operator however the one output that we are interested in in this um, tutorial is the correlation matrix <laughs> so we have to feed this correlation matrix um, into the results so we again have to drag and drop it in the results now if we didn't add this spline from the output port of the operator to the results then the result will not be shown in the result perspective so that's why we had to create this process flow so now we have a process created in our in rapid miner our first process in rapid miner and what this process is going to do when we are going to run this process is that it will create a correlation matrix from the Toyota Corolla data set and I also I have talked about operators <clears throat> so uh, excuse me operators view repositories view process view the next view that uh, I want you to focus on your attention on is the help view and we can increase the size of this a little bit when we click on an operator the help view shows the help uh, for that operator so for example it explains what the correlation operator does it explains what are some of the input it expects it explain it describes what is the output it uh, generates for example the metric output is the correlations of all attributes of the input example set are calculated and the resultant correlation matrix is returned from this port and that's what we are going to do so let's go ahead and run this process to run it we have to click this button which is the play button or the run button and if we click this button it's going to generate this correlation matrix which will be produced in the results perspective so see we are now on the results perspective rapid miner has automatically switched the focus to results perspective in order to show us the correlation matrix and we can see for example the correlation between age of the car and the price of the car is a high negative correlation as we would expect for used cars that is the as the age of the car increases the price of the car decreases and similarly the correlation coefficients for other uh, attributes pairwise attributes are shown over here now we can go back to the design perspective by uh, clicking here and we can now save this process that we have created in order to save this process we can go to um, file and say save process as and I'm going to save it in my tutorial processes and I'm going to say save it as um, correlation okay so I'm going to name the process correlation and say okay so now this process that we just created is saved in this repository under in the processes subfolder now before I end this video I want to show how these processes are saved in our uh, lo local drive by rapid miner I can right go to this process and if I right click here it says open it there's an option open in pile browser and if I click on open in pile browser you'll see that there are two files that rapid miner creates one called properties and the other called dot RMP one is dot properties and the other is dot RMP the dot RMP being the uh, rapid miner process so that concludes this tutorial 
on RapidMiner. Thank you so much for your attention.